Woo! Welcome physics students. Now we're going to solve these pesky phase change problems, which sometimes can add up to a lot of different terms and make for some weird algebra, but it's not too complicated than that. Oh, and before that, we need to look at uh, the difference between evaporation and boiling and learn about latent heat. Buckle up! The IB is not asking you to define boiling or evaporation, but you should be able to distinguish the difference between them. Now, a little bit of background on kinetic theory of molecules is that within a substance, such as a glass of water, all of those molecules are moving at different speeds. The majority are going to be moving and bumping around at one speed, and then some are going to be going faster, and some are moving slower. Now, let's start with boiling first. You've got a cup of water, and it's boiling. Uh, and the temperature has to be at what the particular boiling point is. For water at sea level, that's going to be, and normal air pressure, that's going to be 100 Celsius. Now, most of those mini molecules, both at the top and the bottom and on the sides of a boiling substance, have enough energy to break those bonds that are holding them together as a liquid, and they're free! They're going to be turned into gases, both at the top and the bottom. That's why you see those bubbles coming up through boiling water. That's not air coming up. That's water turning into gaseous water. And so it rises up as bubbles in your pot. And as it boils, that substance is going to stay at the same temperature the whole time. You can boil a pot of water for half an hour. As long as there's still water left in it, it's still going to be at 100 Celsius. It will never get above that. Now evaporation is when water is turning into a vaporous phase, but it's not boiling because the temperature is below. Water will evaporate just at room temperature. Some molecules are moving at different, all molecules moving at different speeds. Uh, a few of those actually are moving fast enough to break the liquid bonds, but they're in, they're in the minority. And if those happen to be at the top and they're exposed to air, then those few molecules, they get set free and they leave. But it's only the high energy ones that leave. And so the lower energy ones get stuck behind, and that's why the liquid cools off. Or when you have water on you, when you step out of the shower, and it starts evaporating, that's why you feel cold, uh, because it's taking the high energy molecules away from you, and taking some of the energy from your skin with them. Now we need to define specific latent heat. Uh, fact I didn't know that I just looked up is that latent means hidden. And you can think of this as the hidden heat, because when you put energy in to make a phase change happen, you don't see the temperature go up. The temperature just remains constant. So you may wonder, where is that crazy energy going to? Uh, it goes into increasing the potential energy. Uh, please write down and pause uh, these things about specific latent heat. What they're explaining is that the temperature does not go up because you're not increasing the kinetic energy when you go through a phase change. You go from solid to liquid, you're just increasing the potential energy of those solid molecules, turn them into liquid at a higher potential energy. Now, specifically, we're going to get to specific latent heat of fusion. That's when you are going through either melting, or if you're going reverse, it could be called freezing. Uh, the variable that we have is going to be the latent heat of fusion. And what we can say is that L is going to be equal to change in energy per unit mass. And the units then are going to be joules per kilogram. There's no degree Celsius involved because there is no temperature change. And that's how much energy it takes to get one kilogram of, let's say, water uh, turned into a uh, liquid at that constant temperature. Uh, specific latent heat of vaporization, same type of thing, except now we're going from a liquid up to a gas, or you could be going in reverse, from a gas back to a liquid. That's going to be L sub V, and that also is going to be change in energy per unit mass, and the units are still the same. Often you will see these things rearranged in your equations as M times L, and this could be either, either L sub F or L sub V. Here's a table of some specific latent heats. And this is the specific latent heat of fusion. And this is of vaporization. And now keep in mind, for fusion, that can be for melting, if you're adding energy, or it could be for freezing, if you're taking energy away. 
vaporization could be if you are vaporizing if you're adding or it could be when you're going reverse maybe you are condensing and you're taking a vapor turning it into a liquid now keep in mind these are pretty giant numbers it's not really proper to compare this to specific heat capacities but when you're increasing the temperature of substances you're dealing with uh, hundreds and thousands here we're dealing with hundreds of thousands or even millions so these are usually larger terms when you're solving numerical problems. Let's solve some problems. All right, here's a problem that I'd like you to uh, pause it, see if you can solve it based on not only the question, but also some of the facts that I gave you about water here. A key to all these phase change calorimetry problems is knowing how many terms you're going to have. So hopefully you should know that you're going to start with a solid chunk of ice at zero Celsius that's just starting to melt and then you're going to melt it all into liquid that's going to be at zero degrees Celsius and then you have to heat that up to 21 degrees Celsius or about room temperature. So you got your two terms, the heat to melt it and then to heat the liquid water and now we can fill in uh, what goes in each term. For melting that's going to be mass times your latent heat of fusion for the liquid, that's going to be the same mass times specific heat capacity of liquid water times temperature change. That's going to be. Now it's just a matter of plugging in some numbers. Pause it. Here I've plugged in the numbers. Notice you have to change your masses to kilograms. I took this scientific notation number and I turned it into a big 334,000. And that uh, is going to give me my 11,690 joules. For this second term, notice my temperature change here. It went from 0 up to 21 Celsius, and that's going to be a smaller value of 3,087 joules. So notice the, it takes way more heat to melt it than it does to raise the temperature of the water, and that's often the case. Phase changes usually take more energy than just changing the temperature of something. And that's going to give us uh, 14,777 joules, and let's round that to two sig figs and end up with about 15,000 joules as our total answer.